I'm now recording for our chaos value metrics working group on November 8, 2019. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, Georg. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. So let's look at the agenda. I shared the minutes document. I'll do that again for anyone who joined minutes. After you sent the link, yeah. <laughs> yep, I just sent it again. So we are on the agenda. We have a review of prototype of parameterized metrics that was in Andy's court, and he is flying right now, so he cannot be with us. So we'll have to postpone this. Unless anyone else did any work on parameterized metrics and implementing them. Like actually building one with a tool, is it? Yeah, he wanted to um, build a quick prototype where you can um, say one commit to me is worth 10 cents. And then depending on what repository you look at, you get commits multiplied by that 10 cents and then you get the total value. Hmm. So that's what he wanted to do. Um, that's at least how I understand what he wanted to do. I'm sure it would be fairly easy in Augur to add that, right? Just the field. All of our metrics have parameters. I think most of yours do as well, don't they? I mean, you operationalize those parameters at different stages of the pipeline, but. They do, but we have not used money as an operator. Uh, and he wants to use money as one of the parameters. I see. Okay. So the next agenda item is to discuss a social currency metric proposal that Samantha, Dylan, and I have worked on. And thank, thank you, Samantha, for joining us today to resolve any questions that come about during our call. Absolutely. Um, um, I also want to make sure that everyone has access to all of the information that we've provided. Um, so if you're not added to the Google Drive that we've created um, between social currency uh, or between socially constructed online and chaos, uh, I can add you um, like now so that you have all the information, uh, but otherwise we should just have the one link uh, for the GitHub request, right? Um, I don't know if, I, Georg shared some things on the last call. I don't know if those are the things, Georg, or if there's other things. Uh, it's something different. Samantha is talking about a Google Drive folder that we had created some time ago where we collected everything during our conversations. Last time I just shared a Google Doc, which now has become the pull request that I wanted to review today. Okay. So Samantha, do you have the link to the Google Drive? Then we can add it to the minutes. So I can't add a link um, to the shared Google Drive because of the way that Google Drive uh, things work. But if I can uh, grab an email address, I can just add you to the drive as an owner, and then you'll have access to everything in it. Um, I put my email in chat. Cool. What you can do, Samantha, is when you look at the drive in Google Drive, you can just copy the URL out of the address bar from the browser and give us that. And anyone who is not added then gets asked to request access. And anyone who is already added can just use that URL to see the Google Drive. You can continue on. Um, you'll get a message here in a moment with that information. Okay. So if we go to pull request 46, um, 
you can, that is the metric that I wanted to discuss with you today and walk through and make sure that we all understand it. Um, it is identical to the Google Doc that we had um, shared last time. Well, identical to the last section of that Google Doc. So um, you can take a look at the markdown file. You, well, here, I'll put it in the chat. So in the chat, I posted the link to the markdown file that is relevant, that has our template. And then if we walk through and see something that needs to be changed, then we can figure out how to proceed with that later. Does that sound like a good plan for you? So we note and Sean, you two are our main audience today because Samantha and I already spent many hours going over this document. <laughs> and it is longer than any other metric chaos currently has. But I think the detail is required for someone to understand it and implement it. I'm, I'm reading the pull request right now. Yeah. Hey, Mia. So this relies on, from a data perspective, it looks like there's a survey component for sure. The data is collected from trace data. And especially when someone writes a comment or writes text. And this metric is really about analyzing that text. So what about the, I guess I'm looking at uh, scms-4-threaded-doc.png. And it's, uh, there's a question on a scale of one to 10, how satisfied are you with your career path? No, oh. Um, it makes me think that's a survey. Or am I looking you, at the PR? I'm not okay. sure where you are. The, here, let me share the document in the chat again that we are talking about. I'm sorry, maybe I'm uh, in, the, I was looking at the pull request and perhaps I was looking at the wrong pull request. It should be pull request um, 46. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's what I was looking at. Okay, so yeah, I'm looking at, um, I guess there's, uh, I think the caption is weighted currency view, right above tools providing um, the metric. Oh, in the visualization section? Yeah. Mm. Sorry, I'm okay. still trying to find it. Here, I'll, I'll share my screen. I have no valence to my thought either way. I was just trying to make sure I understood the origin of the data. Well, I want, um, I can absolutely clarify that if you're okay with it. No, I'm completely opposed to all acts of clarification. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to make sure because having been, so I kind of developed a large majority of this. So. Yeah. Um, essentially what we're looking at when it comes to data collection is um, think of this in implementation at least kind of like Google Analytics uh, where you have specific passive bits of information coming into the system right. based on integrations and then those integrations collect passive information and data rather than you saying hey we're gonna send out a survey collect this qualitative data and then it comes back in. So all of your information and your data is being sourced from the various channels you actually interact with communities through. So support tickets might be one, uh, Facebook comments might be another, uh, Google reviews could be another, Yelp reviews, Amazon reviews. 
Mm -hmm. um, we've also seen a lot of people use uh, traditional support channels that aren't related to tickets, such as a chat transcript from um, like an online that chat system. And that information gets ported into the system. And then on a regular basis, people will go over it um, to define it. And then at scale, we've only had this happen um, like twice, and it's not something that we can really share at the moment. But at scale, someone can also write a AI that's capable of just going through this and being like, okay, so you were originally tagging it like this. Natural language seems to suggest that these are the keywords that are important. Let's tag those. Okay. So the, the image that you referred to, Sean, I think the text with the survey in it is just sample data to be analyzed. It is not actually part of the metric. Oh, yeah. that's you're talking about the picture itself then, right? Yeah, I think, I think you maybe want to pick a different picture of text because when I see the text, the first thing I thought of is, okay, so this includes survey data. <laughs> oh, that okay. like a survey. So um, it can include survey data. You can port in survey data um, as long as the channel is there, but it's not just survey data. This yeah. is just showing you that you can port in an entire document, like a Word document, and then you can go through and use keywords from the attached codex to essentially highlight a piece of sentiment, customer sentiment, and then say, this attributes to this keyword. And yeah. then on the back end, it basically just puts that in as its own line item. Yeah, I, I, my only suggestion, and it's only to avoid confusion, is just have your example image be mm -hmm. something other than a survey because this community is going to see that, I think, a lot like I did and just process that as this, this metric includes survey data. That's the first thought I had. Okay. Um, and I don't think I'm unique in the community. Okay. So it'll just, it'll just confuse what's otherwise pretty interesting stuff. Okay. Um, That's very good feedback. Thank you. Okay. So, Georg, yes. So, when you've been through the review process, when it goes out for community discussion, and you've seen the direction that Matt and some others in the community are taking towards very concise metrics that cover a small amount of ground, um, but we've also talked in the abstract about more what we I call comprehensive or synth synthetic metrics like this where you're taking multiple different measures and constructing uh, a broader evaluation. But this would be the first example of that actually produced as a metric. Correct. Mm -hmm. So I think I think in, in terms of having this not get stuck in the when it goes open to the community process, I think that the the fact that this is this is one of the more, I guess synth synthetic isn't the right word, con, con, Comprehensive. Um, we also called them the composite. Composite. Metric. That's the word. I was looking for that word. I couldn't find it. Yeah, this is a composite metric. And <clears throat> so I think I might state that somewhere. Although social currency metric system suggests compositeness because none of the other metrics have the word system in them. These are not concerns about what you've done at all. These are thoughts I think that you'll understand about how the community is gonna review this. Yep, no, I appreciate that. And I think if you give them the cue that it's a comprehensive metric, that it will be more difficult to take one look at it and go, why is this so giant? Yep, and I, I tried to do that in the pull request. No, this is the... Well, yeah, but you know how people are. They're going to look at the top line yeah. of it and go, this is giant. I don't know if there's like a special code. I mean, this is not the question for this group, but there maybe should be some kind of special signal or met representation of composite metrics. I agree. Yeah, that's a good idea.
So even if I go back to a different working group in the evolution working group, we were talking about uh, time issue resolve time, yeah, which is a composite metric made up of the issue issues closed metric. Yeah, so this is a comparatively. But this yeah. one, yeah, this one is much more comprehensive. So, so when I think of composite, I think of incorporating more than like it. Maybe I'm not incorporating more than one metric, right? So the time to resolution is really the. It's like a calculation. It's a representation of when it was open and when it was closed. So I guess it is taking the open and closed views. Would it, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Uh, would it be more apt then, instead of using the term composite, to use the term aggregate? I'm thinking. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think I think so, because, yeah, I mean, it's a better word for what this is, for sure. I think composite is better than aggregate. I don't know. I think so composite maybe... carries more uh, inclusive meaning. So maybe in the description state, the social currency metric system is a an aggregate or composite metric. There and now in the first line, you get that key. So to walk you through how it works is, oh, Samantha, I see I forgot to put the circle in here. Uh, but you, you start by collecting feedback or comments. So um, also communication, just communication of what's happening in the community. Um, you want to put this, you want to standardize how this should be analyzed. So you develop a codex of terms. Is feedback, um, when you say collect feedback, is that really the trace data, the digital trace data from different platforms? Yes. Yes. Okay. And it's important like collect communication traces or something like that. Yeah. Collect feedback sounds like you're asking them for feedback on something, like you're proactively querying a group of people again, like with a survey. And maybe maybe collect trace, feedback trust data. Sure. Yeah. So I, I think to avoid confusion, you should just remove feedback altogether. I've renamed it to collect communication traces. Mm -hmm. And now there's no more reference to feedback. No, we do have feedback. It's there in here. Four times. So the community members one seems to make sense, as do the developer ones. Um, and then I'll just replace in the implementation feedback with communication. Feel free to change them. Um, not a huge deal for me. Yeah. So in the implementation, we talk about communication. So collect communication traces. Then we standardize how the channels, I think we want to say here how the communication should be assessed. 
you could say communication channels. I think with channel, I think you're saying that there could be discussions on pull requests, discussions on issues, mailing lists, Stack Exchange, Twitter, Facebook, right? Yep. And really this is, if you want to be con like, you're collecting um, communication, really in the first one, if you said collecting communication channel traces, and then you could say standardize how communication channels should be assessed, then you've got a clear link, like, cause really I think what you're doing is you're analyzing the stuff that you collect in step one in step two, right? Or you're standardizing the assessment practices in step two for the stuff you collect in step one, right? Yes. So if you use the same words, it'll be more clear that these are the same things like this, whatever it is, if it's communication channel traces or um, communication channel, whatever it is. Because then again, when you say analyze the data, I think again, that's the same noun. You're, you're basically, you're collecting data, you're deciding how you're going to assess it, and then you're actually performing the assessment. And it's all the same noun, all the same data on steps one, two, and three. And then I think step four is you're compiling uh, the results of the analysis, right? Or you're almost presenting an initial analysis. And then step five, I might, I mean, these are just like, you can take or leave this comment, but I think step five looks like instrumentation where you're deciding what are the thresholds that you're going to use to identify, you know, what thresholds represent signals, what thresholds represent noise, what kinds of things did you find that are signal versus noise? Like you're basically tuning your, your model that you did the analysis and presentation on, is that right? So uh, that's more under six than it okay. is five. Um, okay. Setting benchmarks and future growth strategies, um, that's actually at the point where you start to take what you've learned and put it into action completely separate from the system. So that's when you're starting to develop your uh, community strategy plans. Um, that's when you're starting to set benchmarks for here's where trust is, here's where transparency is, and our reputation score is a little bit low because of this specific feature. How do we want to fix that? And then uh, you put together a marketing strategy or a community strategy, depending on what department you're in, and that's when you make those decisions. So yeah. step five is actually coming out of the system and looking at what your results are. Okay. Okay, so I took your thought here, Sean. Here we collect communication traces, then standardize how communication traces should be assessed or analyzed. Analyzed, then analyze the communication traces. Then we aggregate the data from the analysis. Then we set benchmarks against the aggregate. And I think it's a growth. I would just say in step two, I think I think assessed might be the right word because what I'm reading there is that you're actually making a preliminary decision about what you're going to value. So it's not an objective analysis. You're deciding based on some value system embedded somewhere in your process that this is how you're going to assess or valence the things that you find. And it's probably based on a ton of prior research on how to assess and valence text that's analyzed by a machine would be my guess. That's so I think, I'm, correct, yeah. Thinking assessed is the right word for two, actually. Okay. And then so, three is analyze the communication traces. Four is to aggregate the data from the analysis. And then five is... Is there a presentation and step in four? Is, it, is four getting it ready to show people? Yes, four is where we show it to people. Okay. So four is the point where you've gone through, you've coded all of the comments, um, either via AI or via team members. Um, and at the point of having coded it, that is what's pulling things in using the different keyword tags to the primary dashboard that you currently see on screen. Okay. So you might use the you might use the word presentation there. You might not. 
because you're really presenting preliminary results or presenting data, presenting compiled results or something, but you're showing it to people. And I might use a word in the heading that makes it clear you're showing it to people, but you don't have to take my thought that it's just my thought. I agree with that, definitely. So visualize the aggregate analysis. Oops. Oh. Visualize is sort of, I guess, I don't know, I'm arguing about syntax. I should shut up. Uh, visualize sort of doesn't make it clear that what you're really doing is presenting it to other people. You're sharing it. You're, you're giving it to people in a form that they can actually apply. So it's leaving the lab, it's leaving the AI, and it's getting presented out to people which so is, is it better? a really significant transition more about dissemination than visualization that's what i think i'm hearing yeah okay so dissemination and visualization of the aggregate analysis mm -hmm of the aggregated analysis. And then set benchmarks against the aggregate and predict future growth. At this point, we can set benchmarks and predict future growth. Repeat so the, the main reason why we have selected the original language for step five was that uh, we wanted to turn lag metrics, basically we did this thing, what happened, into lead metrics, which is we want this to happen, how are we going to do it? Uh, so that was a majority of the reason for uh, using the term benchmark and goal. Um, so the idea here is that we should be using the data to predict the future, not to understand the past. You can understand the past with the data by default. Um, and that's what we kind of wanted to impart in this section. Makes sense. I, yeah. That part's pretty clear, I think, now that we've talked about it. All right. Cool um, saving it and updating this. OK. So this is the process. You collect, you standardize how it will be assessed, you analyze it, then you disseminate and visualize the analysis, and then you work with the analysis, repeat the process. There are several filters for looking at the data. One is we can analyze it by channel. So did it come in through pull request comments or was it tweets or was it uh, email list threads, so we filter it by channels. We can also filter it by tags. So in the codex, we can uh, determine different aspects of the project, like looking at uh, comments about Augur versus comments about Grimoire Lab versus comments about the metrics release. And we can tag those comments with the context and then filter by those. We can filter by time. Obviously, and then so Samantha, maybe you can speak to the points of destruction, how that is a filter. Um, this, this isn't, um, so the filter is happening as a result of a time filter. But um, due to GDPR and a lot of data privacy standards, and the fact that we are pulling live passive data from social channels, um, it's more of a GDPR requirement than it is like a optional filter. But we have to determine points of destruction um, for that data. Uh, so as an example, Google Analytics just implemented the ability for you to destroy specific bits of data and what they'll normally do is they'll say, after so many weeks or months of us having this data, um, the basic personally identifiable information, the PII, has to be deleted. Then we get 250 weeks uh, after having collected that data 
for the abstract data to remain active in the system. After 250 weeks, according to GDPR and a whole bunch of other policies, that's no longer our data to use and analyze, but the aggregated data is still obviously important and vital for us to work with. Um, so there's periods in the time metric where we have to destroy some pieces of primary PII. And that's what that means. Yep. We can leave it here for now, but to me, that's not really a filter. It's more how to manage the data and things to be aware of, but I don't yeah. know where else to put it. I, think I just wanted to get it in here um, because it's an incredibly important aspect to me as someone who's tremendously invested in data, data privacy. I didn't know where to put it either. So I thought that putting it under the time filter, which is how you do this, um, would make more sense. Um, I think I think you actually probably have identified um, uh, this. I mean, it's almost a separate heading. I agree that Maybe. with the headings that we're constrained by, there is no place for that that fits Maybe clearly. Put it as a data constraint uh, under the data collection or data analysis section it fits under data collection strategies but i think it's um you might want to create a heading for data collection policies and practice or maybe related related um regulatory considerations or something i mean we should it definitely needs to be in there that if you're collecting yeah. this kind of data, there's a re legal responsibility in Europe and next year, California to destroy these kinds of things. And arguably there's an ethical responsibility that you have either way. So let's try this and see how we like it. Yeah, it might be worth creating a new heading called like uh, legal or policy limitations in the um, metric template uh, that kind of just provide the spot for us to say, here's our social responsibilities I for this metric. Uh, you're, where you're putting right now, it makes sense. So my, while I fully agree that this is important, to me, this is overarching many metrics, not just this particular metric. Right. Um, so I think this is a better place for it than we had in filters. Are we okay with that for now? Yes. Good. Thank you. I see nodding. So another filter we have is most impactful comments. And this is during the analysis, we can flag or um, tag specifically impactful comments. Then we can also look at the raw comment data and drill down. I don't know if that's so much a filter as a visualization aspect. I mean, it, it definitely changes the visualization, which is why we have the filter here, but it also has a visualization down below where the spreadsheet becomes an actual card where you can read the comment and everything about it. So, I mean, it is an alternative visualization. I would agree with that. Right, um, but is, it, is this a way to filter the data? I would assume that I think all in of your the... context, probably not. But... So I don't think in, let's say we go into this um, pivot table, we would not use raw comment data as a way to filter what is shown in the pivot table. Correct. So I don't think it's a filter. If you agree, then I would remove it. And we do have 
the expanded comments view number. that shows the full data, right? So I'll remove that filter. And then the last filter is whether the analysis and the tagging was done by an artificial intelligence or by humans. Any questions or comments about filters? Do we call it AI or bot? Can, sorry, you were very quiet. Can you expand on your question? Uh, should we call it AI or bot on human tagging or AI tagging? I feel like if we were to call it a bot, it would kind of demonstrate a certain simplicity that just doesn't exist in the AI if it were to be created. Because we are talking about like natural language processing followed by tags. So um, I stated AI because it's more general, um, but I definitely see where you stand there. I just thought I would put clarification in and let you choose. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so then we have different visualizations. One is a dashboard. One is a tool. This is an air table where the tagging occurs and there's some uh, aggregate on the right. Here is an expanded comments view, threaded document view, which we already said we would update the visualization with different data. Um, and then for weighted currency view, I didn't see a screenshot. Do you have a screenshot, Samantha? Um, honestly, it's the exact same. Um, honest, I'm, I'm kind of wondering now, after we've had the conversation, if this would be better as a filter rather than a visualization. Because really all this is, is um, individuals get to go through and say, this is more important, this is less important on a scale of minus three to positive three. And that would allow you to sort and filter the data based on what you think is more important for your community. Um, so basically you get to weight the system. Um, I think that probably stands as a filter more than it does a visualization. Uh, what does everyone else think? Is this identical to the most impactful comments filter that we already have? Uh, no, those would be different. So most impactful comments is basically you flagging something as saying, I would like, I would like us to go through this in a meeting because this comment is important. Whereas the weighted comments view is basically us saying, so this comment should kind of wait for these metrics that we've tagged it as um, lower or higher. Um, so that's actually like a star rating, so to speak, whereas the other one is a flagged for review. Okay, then I will move this up. Do other people agree with that being more of a filter than a visualization? I, I mean, I think sounds good to me. I think in practice, we'll just see what happens. That, it's harder to me, for me to say like conclusively what it is because we haven't done it yet, or at least we haven't, I haven't done it yet. <laughs> you have. I mean, the way that we do it in Airtable anyway, um, the way that we do it in Airtable, I don't really like as much because you're able in Google Sheets and Smart Sheets implementations, as well as Max QDA, you're able to create like an actual uh, weighted system. But in Airtable, you have to use a rating column. <laughs> and I don't really think that works very well because it actually multiplies the numbers rather than adjusting the numbers as like a positive or negative addition. And I think that's kind of annoying. <laughs> okay, I've added the filter weighted currency. I removed view because we're in filters, not visualizations. 
and I, yeah, that's what I did. And let me talk about the tools providing the metric and how to implement it really. So there's different data points. I don't know if we should call this metric or data point or description dimension as a data point and metric. These aspect. terms are directly borrowed from Google Analytics. So Google Analytics considers um, dimensions to be categories in which the data are collected and the metrics themselves are the actual numbers or data sets uh, that fall in those dimensions. So this is a direct borrow from the terminology Google uses. Okay. I don't know if uh, we know if Kevin or Sean have any uh, thoughts. On the metrics, I, I was like thinking having a dis description adding, like you are defining a dimension and you are providing a description of the dimension. So dimension itself is a metric, right? And here you are in the second column, we are providing description rather than metric. So we could rename metrics to definition. Well, not all of those dimensions are really metrics. Some of them are uh, manipulations of metrics. So how about we call them data points? I think that's fair. I agree. So once you have this, create this data set with the following data points, the data points are on the left and then we describe them on the right. And then create a second sheet of unified codex of terms, which will define terms. And it should something like this, category definition, when to use, when not to use. Do we have any example or with a small description of any particular when to use when not to use? Can you so, say that one more thing? Yeah, I'm saying can we have some description or something just for an example? For example, if we look at the transparency, when to use, when not to use, to give us um, like clarity to the community or a reviewer. Yeah, I actually have that on the actual air table. Let me grab that real quick. Is this in the reference link here, the Airtable reference link? Yes, uh, but I don't think that that reference link is actually going to give you the codex. Um, uh, I'm a little bit worried about that link, good. honestly. Um, I think we should change it away from just a view link to actually a link to become a commenter, which gives you full access to the table. So right now, if I click on there, I can't even use it. I think it just brings up a view link for the specific table. Um, I don't know. That. Oh, hey, actually, you are getting access to it. Yeah, so if you were to create an account on Airtable, it would grant you access to the tables, to both tables. So yes, um, never mind, I'm wrong. That is correct. So if I just give them my Google data, 
then I see what's this. So Kevin, is this what you were looking for? Uh, sorry, we know. Yeah, I'm trying to see the like, bottom where it's used. Can you speak up, please? You're very quiet. I'm saying I'm trying to look at the column where it says uh, where to use, where not to use. Oh, this is in the codex. Okay. So you'll see uh, over on the right, uh, yeah. the times when it is to be used are when it's specific enough that any person will look at this codex and be like, okay, so this term is intended to be used when this situation happens, but okay. not when this situation happens. So yeah. it's an inclusion, exclusion, kind of if then thing. Yeah, now I, got, I get it. Like looking at this, it makes more sense. But like when I was reading over there, I was like, I, I had this question whether what, where to use. Will yeah. this be part of the metric? Um, the codex is a necessary part of the metric because you can't be creating parameters that don't provide uh, specific enough statements because otherwise it, it's too subjective. So yeah. this is, Georg is probably not going to like me about this, but um, this codex is actually ripped directly from grounded theory analysis methods and strategies, um, which are used where anthropology teams when they're writing ethnography and coding qualitative data, um, they use codexes like this. This is a simplified version, uh, but these codexes are intended to make sure that 20 people working on one ethnographic um, compilation are able to use terms in the same ways. And since people are coming up with category tags, yeah. um, we have to use a codex to ensure that objectivity still remains in the process. And I think what my, my question is then, is this spreadsheet going to be part of what's in the pull request eventually, or? It'll be a part of the analysis platform. So in the pull request, we just have the sample. We don't have the when to use, when not to use text. Would it make sense to include it here, Samantha? I would say like have an example, like a category definition example, when to use, when not to use. I, I don't, uh, I think that's too much detail. Okay. I think you just, you link out to, you can link out to other documents or link out to the implementation and that information can be available there. I, uh, I, I don't think we want to get too carried away with detail. Yeah, I mean, we're already, we already are, but um, that's okay. I, I think when it comes to actually putting this in practice, it will be hard to do that if you don't have a codex that's, aligned with where this is headed. And it looks like you have there. So I'm not against leaving it out because I agree there's a lot in here, but I think some kind of link that indicates what sort of codex or if it sounds like in fact, this specific codex that you're referring to is what is intended as the codex for this kind of metric in general. Like that's not a rough example that is specifically focused on this problem space. Yes. And um, what I can say is, Georg, if you head back to the uh, meeting agenda, I went ahead and placed a description and example for both when to use and when not to use. And we can absolutely work craft this to make it more sense within the context of chaos. Um, entirely up to how you want to make sure this is here, but I think I imparted it well enough. So this one is from utility, this example? Yes. Then I say let's just add it to our table. Um, I'll copy this over. Uh, if we're going to add it to the table, do you also want the definition and example? Um, so definition we already have. It, 
the example is what's missing. We don't even have a column for example. Oh, that's my fault. <laughs> um, example is kind of optional. So on the implementation that I actually pulled the table from, it wasn't included, but for the labor deck demo, it is included. It's, it's just an optional column. Okay. So here I add a for utility the when to use, when not to use. Yeah. So we know then Sean and Kevin. Do you think we should fill in all of those when to use, when not to use for the other dimensions as well or leave it out? I mean if if it's a tool that is always being used for this specific problem, then just put the whole thing in, I suppose. Yeah. If it it's must. just uh if it's the just an example. Part. Yeah, then just put the whole codex in. Yeah. Okay. Um the example column is also very helpful. Um so if we want to put it in there, we can remove it at any given time during implementation. I would not do the example in because the example is context specific. And so they would be different for every community. It is true. Okay. Any other comments? Thoughts? Now that we've walked through the metric, um, maybe you could take a look at the description and objectives to see if you, if they make sense now that you understand what. I was actually just going to mention those. So I came in late, so I wasn't sure if you had already talked about the description or the, uh, the objectives. Uh, I like the metric. I think, I think it's well written. Uh, but I am concerned with the uh, uh, the length and the style. Uh, I think the, for the description, is it's probably about three paragraphs too long. Uh, and then the uh, for the objectives, I think we need to be a little more explicit. So I guess what I'm saying in both areas, uh, I think they need to be more concise and more explicit. And it's, and it's, probably, it's more of a style issue. Kevin, were you here for, and I can't remember, you weren't on the call and I initially started and then I was looking at documents instead of the people in the call. Were you here for our discussion about composite and aggregate metrics? No, I don't. Uh, I don't. Yes, I was, I was there for that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is certainly different than other things that we have done. Right, I, I understand it's different, but so for example, in the, in the description, for example, there's, there's a fair amount of text that is kind of selling the metric, making the case that the that the, uh, the SCMS metric is important, right? Uh, that type of language isn't necessary. We just need to say what the metric is. We don't need to we don't need to say that it's not the net promoter score, for example. Uh, we don't need to we don't need to sell it, right? The, the fact that the document exists is the is the the cell, I suppose. That's probably very much so, Dylan, and my fault because we come from a background of marketing. I think if we're and it's it's well written and it makes sense for it makes sense for a marketing document or for a research paper, uh, but for kind of a standards document, I think we just we just need to be concise and say this is what it is. And then when we get down to the uh, the objectives, it's very explicitly state these are the objectives. Okay, so we are almost out of time. Um, so we don't have time today to rephrase this, but we'll take it as an action item um, for next time. So thank you everyone for the conversation. We'll bring it up again next time. <laughs> in two weeks and I hope you all have a good weekend. And if you have any last thoughts or comments, feel free to speak up now.
Um, I also just want to confirm, um, everyone here does have access to the additional drive, correct? Yeah, I do. Yeah. And then I tried to open it with my some Linux tools and it made copies of everything twice. And uh, got a kind of a hacked Google Drive sync tool that blew up on me and I can't delete my copies. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I see what you're talking about after. Yeah, I don't know what it was trying to do, but it, it, mm. I'm not going to not going to use that plugin that I thought was really cool two days ago anymore. <laughs> so uh, pretty much anything created by Sean Goggins. Can yeah, be pretty much um, destroyed because it's just, I tried it twice, as you can see. Yeah. So um, yeah, I can go ahead and get rid of those. Can I ask how you pronounce your last name, by the way? Goggins. Goggins. OK, so I was right. OK. Yeah. Link. <laughs> um, the Irish Link is right here. Uh, the, the, it's the Irish spelling of link. Yeah. Oh, wait, we have a very similar last name, just different language. No, <laughs> I just made that up, Georg, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I got you because usually it's Matt oh. German for getting me at my gullibleness. Well, so the thing is that Daniel is weirdo and this weirdo is left in Spanish. So Daniel and I share the last name just in different languages. Really? Yeah. That I did not know. See, I was I was pulling stuff out of my butt for fun at the end of a call, and uh, Kevin, <laughs> uh, just so... <laughs> you got me. <laughs> uh, Kevin, it looks like you're not on the list. Uh, if I can get your email address, I can send you an invite to the drive. Uh, sure. Uh, here, let me just. I can just put it in the document. Five, okay, five, five, I'm five, five, stopping the recording and officially ending the meeting now. All right, thank, thank you, everyone. everyone. Nice to meet you, you. Samantha. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm throwing my...